All right, hey, Drew's Views here, back for another Anna Monday with Code Gaius, Leluch of the Rebellion R2. And today I'm up all the way to episode 16, which is called United Federation of Nations Resolution Number 1. All right, so we're back to the long episode titles. Had a couple short ones in a row there. Back to the long stuff. Uh, last time on the Seas World episode 15, a lot of stuff happened. Uh, namely, it was with Lelouch and his dad, the old emperor there, revealing what his powers are. And we got a lot of backstory on old Cece as well. And she is old. Uh, so basically, the gist of it is that you get this immortality. So when she was a young child, this nun gave her the gayest powers. And what she wanted was like everyone to love her and things like that. She was like an orphan, I think. Then... A couple years later, when she looks the age that she looks currently still, the nun revealed she tricked her, Cece, and gave her the immortality power so she, the nun, could die. And then Vivi also had this immortality power. That's why he was the same, always looking the same age, like a little kid, basically. Uh, and then his brother, the emperor, Charles, took it. Now, I believe Vivi is dead. I'm pretty sure he's dead, but... It still is a little unclear. I mean, a lot of things in the show are a little unclear to me. I do, um, maybe it looks like I'm just not paying it well attention enough or something, which could be part of it, but also um, I do, it is a type of show you kind of need to watch twice sometimes, um, especially when I'm doing it, it week to week here, like usually about a week between each new episode I watch. So when I go back and edit my reaction, I pick up on a lot more stuff typically. And one of those things was, um, so Cece was trying to kill herself at the end there, or that's what she wanted to pass the immortality on, I believe, to Leluch there, zero. But then she decided not to at the last second because Leluch said he knows what she really wants, which on the second, uh, you know, on editing it, I think it was she wants someone to actually, that actually loves her or for her, something, something to that effect. I don't think it's like a romantic love because it, that's not really the vibe I'm getting between the two of them, but... Maybe it's just um, the lo a love of like having someone, essentially. Kind of like what Rolo wanted, too. Like, he wanted a brother sort of thing. And then, of course, uh, I assume Lulu still has plans to kill him. It's, the other episode, it didn't go down. So he's still around, though, probably for a little while. I'm sure it's not going to be a heavy ending for him, though. Because I'm still wearing black for Shirley here, even though uh, episodes later... Uh, look, I just have a lot of black shirts. Got to wear them. Uh, my, my friend designed this, actually. It's his t-shirt company. But anyway, um, what else? Oh, so then at the end, though, CC uh, seemed to have amnesia now. So I think we'll be dealing with that this episode. And the Emperor's free, still doing what he wants. But Lelouch did kind of, you know, subvert his expectations there. Charles thought that CC would be going, you know, along with this whole thing. What else? Oh, Suzuki was going to torture Callan with this the refrain drug didn't end up happening. He realized he didn't want to be like Zero. Um, he realized for sure now when he invaded the school, back room area, secret room, that he knows that it's Lelouch has his memories back. Um, so he'll be after him strong. And then Ogi and Valletta wasn't there in the room because she's going after Ogi to kill him. And then I guess had, well, he said he loved her or whatever. I probably was having second thoughts when Kaguya showed up and tried to assassinate Ogi, uh, I believe is what happened, yeah. And then, no, no, obviously not, that makes no sense. She tried to assassinate Valletta, and then Ogi got in the way, though, of the ninja star things and was going over a cliff, and then Valletta realized maybe she does love him, or it was instinct or whatever, she jumped in after them, so they're dead maybe now, I don't know, they didn't show them die specifically. Normally one would be from this, but, you know, people are coming back all the time in the show, so who knows if they'll even go back to it this episode. Maybe they'll skip one or two. We'll see. But those were the main storylines. I'm sure I'm missing a few things, but talking a lot already, um, so let's get right into episode 16 here. Oh, also, uh, Schneisel and Nina were developing some type of weapon in the desert there, too, in Dallas. This horseshoe-shaped table. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, not only kind of put Lohmeyer in her place a little bit last time. Okay, so he's trapped there. So she thinks she's like an orphan girl now, I think. Back to when she was a kid. A slave. Alright, of course. Cornelia, we had not mention her. I don't think that's all you want. <laughs> so dramatic, Callan. Good old Jinkei. His princess. Okay. Oh, is that uh, the president? The former president? Yep. So, like she did at school, she's already doing crazy stuff at her job. Crazy festivals and stuff. Is it gonna be some pizza hut pizza? I think it is. <laughs> so with the weird hot, yep, <laughs> the weird hot dog things. That had to be some Japanese thing. Like maybe they had some. Uh, what do you call it? They had some special Japanese pizza that has that, or Pizza Hut has these hot dogs in it or whatever those are. I don't think we got that in the States. Is it gonna bring her memories back? Oh, Millie. It's gotta be what's her name, pink haired girl. Anya, is that it? That's true, memories are deceiving. Ooh, nice grab. Who? Take his glove off to slap him with it. Okay, so Schneisel's obviously gonna take over with his father missing. Would certainly make the most sense. seen Lloyd in a few episodes. All right, that's the, what they got from Callan, obviously. see Suzuku killing a bunch of uh, 11s, Japanese. Still, I feel like Diatard's up to something. We don't know what it is yet, maybe. This guy again. I'm 
implying that Zero got her pregnant. I will settle down, Toto. Been such a manly man. Hmm. How is he back and not dead, or at least severely injured? That was a good way for Millie to still be in the show when she's reporting in the news. Poor, uh, what's his name there, all alone. Rivals. I'm doing good, I'm more than halfway through the season, I think, but I'm picking up, doing pretty good on names by now. think they're gonna like that one. Is it really him? Oh boy. He's emperor. I wonder if he'll reveal who Zero really is. He did. Oh boy, it's getting serious now. Yeah, that's why I would have thought the Emperor might have done so. You gotta go to war. Looks fucking gross. Oh boy. Very symbolic, the chess pieces dripping with blood. Is he gonna have an epiphany of some sort? Somehow get Suzuku back on his side. Should say do it for her, not for me.
Oh, abrupt ending. All right. Well, a lot of interesting things there. Not as much different things happen as the last episode. as mostly the one-man plotline, but interesting stuff there. So at the end of the last episode, I didn't have the conception that the Emperor was dead or something or stuck in the Seas world, which I guess they thought at the beginning, Lelouch thought, obviously, but he's back, of course. Now, yeah, like um, Lelouch was saying uh, to himself there when he was flipping out, uh, why didn't I, or, you know, if I tell everyone who I am, then the Black Knights will disintegrate, kind of, and the main reason being because he's Britannian, obviously a noble, um, and they're so against Britannia. But that's why I was wondering, even before he said that, why doesn't the, when the Emperor is giving his speech on, you know, cutting into the feed there, why doesn't he reveal that it's his son and, and make that happen? I don't know. I guess it's like another chess move thing. I guess they just want to make it, he wants to make it more interesting or whatever and really have a war. So anyway, what Lilith was trying to do was set up like a UN type of thing, I guess. They might have even basically said that. Uh, but like the the real world UN does like have an army. They're only supposed to intervene in one country when there's issues like be between a country itself, I guess, or countries can't figure it out themselves. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something like that. But of course, all countries in the real world have their most have their own military as well. What Zero wanted was for them to just be the military. Of course, it's never really gonna work. I don't think, especially in a world like ours or a world like this. It's wishful thinking there. And even if the Emperor was dead or whatever, I'm pretty sure Schneisel would still fight on Britannia's side and, you know, go to war against Zero here. I have to assume. Be, you know, he's doing the weapons test, all that. He's not in on it with his father, though, because he was surprised, too, when his father cut in, it seemed like. Um, and Nina had some idea about, like, wanting Suzuku to use a weapon on the Japanese, I think, on the 11s. She's still always been anti-11. She, what, what Yuffie did, actually, she would have, was something she, I don't think she would have wanted, she obviously didn't want Yuffie to, like, ruin her name and die, of course, but it did seem like she was, like, anti-11, so she wouldn't be upset that they all got killed, which is only because of the gay, so anyway, et cetera, et cetera, so, and we saw Cornelia briefly, she's like, you have the gall to say something about a younger sister to me, she's obviously super pissed still about that. And yeah, and Lilich does keep saying it's for Nunnally only and, and the accord with Suzuku there at the end, for Nunnally, for Nunnally. And he did start that out and stuff, but I still don't 100% believe that to be true. I do think he wants to be like the ruler of the world sort of thing. And there are a lot of um, similarities in this show between this and the anime series Death Note, which I think a lot of people have pointed out, but... And I definitely don't think Lilich is, is, is evil, like, like the character... Of, uh, light and Death Note is, but it, there is a lot of similarities where he is getting carried away with this power that he has. He wants to kind of be like the god of the world type of thing, or at least like Luch maybe doesn't want to be god, but he still wants to be the ruler. He still wants to essentially tell everyone what to do and have the world work in a way that he thinks it should. And and like if Nunnally, there was earlier episodes in the season where Nunnally, he thought he, Nunnally was lost to him, etc. And he got depressed and all that, was kind of giving up, but I don't know, even if she died, if he would truly give up on this, whether it's for revenge, he'll say it's for revenge or whatever, I think he'd, he'd keep going. And, and then even the scene where he slapped the thing out of uh, Callan's, uh, not Callan, when he slapped the thing out of Cece's hand there, the pizza, the gross looking pizza, uh, that was like almost like a, a light from Death Note move where he flips out there when he, things aren't going his way. But of course, unlike light, he apologized then and he, uh, felt bad about it, obviously, and that's what, and her talking about friend made, friends made him think about Suzuku there, um, and so what she was saying about wanting the friend there, I think, like what I was saying before this episode, what, what she really wanted, and what Leiluch said she, was a real thing she wanted last time, not to die, but to have someone, so maybe it is, like, more like a, a true friend thing than something romantic, I think. It doesn't, I don't know if it completely makes sense what, what happened to Cece with her amnesia, or because, not that it doesn't make sense, but there is some kind of um, difference here because she it does seem like she thinks she's like the, the young girl still, like from before she originally got the gas. That's a flashback kind of things we're seeing. That's how she's acting and talking about because once she got the gas, even before the immortality, she of course wasn't a slave anymore. She was ordering people around to do what she wanted, all of that. But of course, like is she, maybe she isn't looking in a mirror or anything, but she is the older 
version now, of course, so I would think she would be confused about that, but I guess she just doesn't figure that out yet, or I don't know. Uh, I assume she'll be getting her memory back here. We'll see. Um, Callan be beats Suzuki up. She's still locked up. They want to save her. And they got introduced to a couple of new of the Knights of the Round. The one guy seems like a real jerk off. And he's getting into it with everyone. Um, so they'll be coming up. And then Ogi popped in out of nowhere. Something obviously weird going on here based on the last thing we saw. So someone save him and someone give him some type of power is he like is he someone else to disguise i mean we they do have uh pretty high-tech disguises some people do at least because kaguya was dressed up like Lelouch that whole time is someone dressed up as him like impersonating him or i don't know about that but it's something's clearly going on there and they don't want to tell us yet but and no valetta though so something to do with her of course uh all right well, I think uh, I went over most of the stuff I wanted to talk about there. That was Code Gas episode 16. I'll be back next time for episode 17 of R2. Uh, Drew's Views. Hey, if you like these, subscribe to the channel. Check it out. And uh, until then, we're out of here. Peace. <laughs>